Merry Christmas, guys. That's right, it's that time of the year again, and today Christmas came a little bit early in my household. That's because I just got this. That's right, the SML SA300. Now this is an amplifier and a DAC all in one, and it's actually got some pretty cool features on it, so I'm pretty excited to bring this to you. Now SMSL actually asked me if I wanted to review this, and when they did, they told me it came in three colors, blue, black, and red. And I said, all right, well, surprise me on which color you give me. And sure enough, they did. It's not even marked on the box. I have no idea what color is in here. So uh, we're gonna be surprised. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now the amplifier itself came with a few pamphlets and of course a user manual. And although the user manual looks small, it's actually quite thorough on the operation of the amplifier and the remote control. The box also contained a USB cord for the DAC, a massive power supply that is capable of outputting 162 watts, a Bluetooth antenna, and a remote control. Now let's talk about some of the technical highlights. This amplifier boasts that it can output 160 watts or 80 watts by two at four ohms, and 40 watts by two at eight ohms. It has a 384 kilohertz 32-bit driver-free DAC, 0.008% THD plus N, it has an RCA input. It utilizes the new Bluetooth 5 that supports aptX and even has a passive subwoofer output. Now, as mentioned, it does come with a remote control. However, it does not come with any AAA batteries. So if you plan to use a remote control, make sure to pick up some batteries. Now, when you turn the SA300 around, you're gonna see a wide array of inputs. You're gonna see your Bluetooth antenna, your passive subwoofer output, your RCA in, your DAC in, and of course those binding posts which do accept banana plugs. The one thing though that you're not gonna see back there is a fiber optic input. Now from the onset, I knew this amplifier was something special. It is made of all aluminum with nice sturdy rubber feet to improve stabilization and vibration control. The display was very sharp and clear, making it very easy to read. And even the remote control buttons were spaced properly with the buttons at the top half of the remote. This made it a lot easier for me to control and I didn't get any hand fatigue. Everything was really well thought of, but what I didn't expect was the customization. It was completely customizable from the color you order to the screen to even the DSP. This has seven different DSPs. It has separate internal bass and treble control and even an eighth setting, direct. That bypasses all your DSP so that you know that you're hearing just the source material. They added a passive subwoofer output for those who want to utilize a powered subwoofer. This allows you to easily convert this from a stereo channel amplifier to a 2.1 system. That by itself would be enough for most people, but SMSL didn't stop there. They even made the display screen completely customizable as well. You can easily navigate through the menu and change it to whatever color you would like. You really can't individualize this to not only the way you want it to look, but also the way you want it to sound. The DSP function worked really well in my setting. It was easy to notice the difference between the DSPs, and it was nice that the display showed the DSP in the top right-hand corner. At any time, you could easily identify the DSP you were on. The display, is, the display itself was large enough to see the volume when turning it up, and the input logo was large enough to easily identify what source you were on. However, I wouldn't mind the volume control display to be just a little bit larger. Although this hasn't been a problem for me, I could see this maybe being a problem for someone sitting far enough away. The remote control was responsive and was very well designed. Anything I could do from the physical unit, I could also do with the remote, making complete remote operation a possibility. One thing to note though, is that some of the lettering does get pretty small. So although you can do it with the remote control, you may have to get physically closer to be able to read the display. Now, after playing some music through it, I did have a few last thoughts. I don't have a way of measuring distortion from the amplifier, but I will say everything played very clean at the loudest sounds that I dared to play it. I personally love the fact of running my new prototype subwoofer that I'm working on. It gave me so much more bass and it gave a full range of sound that I wouldn't normally get from a mini amplifier. The screen itself is one of the things that impressed me the most. I mean, it really is crystal clear. I'm used to seeing cheap 8-bit, blocky screens, and this is far from that. And it, it really is needed, especially when you're playing this from far distances. Now the Bluetooth worked flawlessly and I had no trouble with any of the other inputs, which now comes down to if I would recommend it. 
So let's go ahead and talk about the final thoughts on the SMSL SA300. This is my favorite amplifier that someone has sent me that's already manufactured. I really, really like this amplifier. It hits all the button points for me. It is a really well-made uh, amplifier. It has a really nice case on it. It has a really easy to read screen from far away, which is important because it has a nice remote control and the buttons are placed in a way that is very easy for me to be able to reach. The other things that are great about it, it has subwoofer output. Thank you, SMSL, for doing that. I know you've done that in the last couple amplifiers, and I really appreciate still seeing this. And of course, it has a built-in DAC for all those that want to use that. Now, having said that, there's one thing that I feel like this thing is missing, and that's a fiber optic input. Now, some of you guys don't need a fiber optic input. In fact, I don't need a fiber optic input, but, I know that a lot of people have been coming up to me recently and saying, hey, you know, the one thing that my television has is a fiber optic out, but it doesn't have analog audio out anymore, or it doesn't have a headphone jack out. Well, for those of you that are stuck in that situation, this isn't going to work for your television. Now, granted, there's not a lot of televisions that I've come across that that's the case for, but there are some out there. So keep that in mind if you want to use this for your television to power a 2.1 system. Me personally though, works flawlessly for everything that I need it to do. Works great on my computer, works great on my television. There's really not a place where I couldn't think of wanting to put this particular amplifier. So would I recommend it? Absolutely. And if you need a gift for an audio enthusiast in your life, especially right now for Christmas time, like a last minute gift idea, this is something I think they would really, really like. And get the color they'd like, black, red, blue, whatever. I, I actually really like the blue and I'm glad that they gave me the blue because I think it's really pretty. All right, guys, tell me your thoughts on it. Go ahead and hit me up in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you guys. As always, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if this is your first time at the channel, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. Make sure you get the notifications when new videos come out because I want to keep seeing you guys back here again and again. Thank you guys. Man, I gotta clean this stuff up. What are you still doing here? <laughs> Go! Oh, I mean, since you're still here, check out the website, www.toidsdiyaudio.com. There, you're gonna find more pictures of this, and you might actually get some reviews of other products, not to mention a great forum for any of you guys that are doing DIY work. All right, guys, thanks again. Now, seriously, leave. <laughs>